Hey everyone, Rodney here from Cleves Tech. Have you ever tried to generate an image and no matter what you try for a prompt, it does not give you the results that you want? Well then hopefully this video will help you understand why and give you ideas on how to get those results. In this video, we're gonna be talking about prompting in Stable Diffusion and any of these tips also work with many other generative AIs such as Midjourney. I will be using Focus for this video, which is an easy to set up and use interface for Stable Diffusion. Do keep in mind that I do have plenty of other videos on Focus and Stable Diffusion if you are interested. In this video, I'll be covering a wide range of topics, including the basics of prompting, positive, negative prompts, prompt weighting, multi-line prompts for blending, the association effect, which is a big one, and much more. So whether you're a complete beginner or you're already familiar with prompting, you should find some useful tips in this video. So I'm not gonna dive into every possible aspect of prompts and you're gonna find a lot of different opinions about prompts. I'm just gonna give you what I've learned and what I've researched, and you can go with it from there. The text prompt is the primary way that you interact with the AI to create your images. There are other tools such as image prompts. We're gonna cover primarily the text prompts. The text prompt is how you tell the AI what you want. Imagine you're asking a friend to draw a picture, but instead of speaking to them, you write down exactly what you wanna see in that drawing. Of course, your friend is a little bit of an idiot and doesn't really understand your language, but knows a lot of the primary words. This is why often when entering a prompt, you may not get the results you expect if you write like you would to another person. It most likely will only understand keywords and try to piece things together from there. Now, as for creating the perfect prompt, what I prefer to do is start off simple. I then build things up as I want. The problem I find with very long and descriptive prompts is that the AI gets mixed up. I see a lot of people online and they're asking, especially if they're new, they have these prompts, they'll copy them from one place, they combine, they add. Next thing you know, you have a, you have a whole page full of text for a prompt. And in most cases, you're not gonna get good results from that. Just kick things off simply and then dial up the detail as needed. The thing with super descriptive prompts is they can really trip up the AI in essence, the key to effective prompting in generative AI or focus is to strike a balance. Be descriptive enough to guide the image generation process, but also open enough to embrace what the AI might do for crazy shit. I like some of that stuff. So start with the basics of what you want, like a key character, a couple of important objects, maybe the overall vibe. Get the base image that's somewhat close to what you're envisioning. Then if something's off, like everything's red, you can start getting more specific to nail down some of the details. And worst case, at some point you may have to decide you're just gonna fix it later in painting. And also don't be afraid to take advantage of other AI tools like ChatGPT, Claude, any of those to help you write prompts. Now I find you can't just tell it you want it to write a prompt because a lot of times it will actually give you a really long and those don't always work well. But if you tell it you want a very short, concise prompt with just the details, it usually actually can come up with some pretty good ideas. So as far as what to put into your prompts, think of it more as ingredients. First, you're always gonna want a subject. You need to have some sort of subject. That can be a person, a place, a thing, an animal, uh, adjectives, descriptions of that subject or the surroundings. Also, you might wanna add an action or activity if the person's dancing or if they're cooking. Then you have things like environment and setting. Where is it happening? Is it in a forest, an alley? That kind of sets the stage. Then you also have mood and atmosphere, peaceful, eerie, joyful. You can actually just add those words as just keywords, and that'll impact the whole look and feel of the image. Now, you also may want to add the medium and style. Do you have a specific look in mind? You're looking for watercolor? you want it to look like a realistic photograph, mention it in the prompt or use one of the styles in focus. Although be careful because a lot of these styles do add a lot of different things because that's all that styles really are for the most part is they're just wrappers that add extra keywords to your prompts. And also perspective and composition. You know, this guides the camera angle, bird's eye view, is it a close up? Are you looking for a wide angle shot? This can also have a big impact on your image results. All these things are interconnected. Now, I do have a video that covers different camera angles if you wanna dive deeper into that subject as well. And don't be afraid to look up different terms if the ones you use don't seem to give you the results that you want. An online thesaurus can be your best friend when you're trying to find other ways of saying things so the AI might understand what you're trying to tell it. Now, when entering a prompt, you can write in sentences, 
that's up to you. But I do find for myself, it's better to keep things short, separate things mostly with commas, whether I enter a cat walking down a hill surrounded by high grass or a cat, comma, walking, comma, hill, comma, high grass, I'll most likely get pretty much the same results. But the best way to learn is to experiment. One of the benefits of starting off with a simple prompt and building up to a longer one is you can actually see the changes that those additions have on the resulting image, especially if you use the same seed. A lot of times you can even notice it even more. Now, when it comes to focus, it has one unique thing. Um, it has its own offline GPT-2 GPT powered prompt processing engine equipped with various sampling enhancements, which is supposed to ensure visually appealing results regardless of how long the prompt is. Although that's not true, you don't wanna to enter too long of a prompt. Uh, I think over 500 words, you're gonna start running into potential errors. So do keep that in mind. You enable that when focus V2 is enabled in the styles section. Um, whenever that's checked off, it's going to be using that. And what it does is it adds, just like the styles do, it adds to the prompt, it adds more keywords, but it's more dynamic. It changes based upon what your prompt is. The idea is that whether you just put in a cat or you put in a really long prompt, you're going to get good results. I do find I get a lot better results than I would without anything. So if I were to just type in a cat and then put the Focus V2, I'm definitely getting much better results. And when you're just looking to get a decent image without a ton of adjusting different parameters, it can be very useful. Now, just be aware that this setting does, like I said, add more keywords to your prompt. And sometimes you may want to disable it when you're testing things to, because it could be negatively impacting the results that you want to get. And that's the same thing with all the styles in focus. They're just wrappers for more keywords, more tokens into your prompt. And if you've used other tools like Midjourney, Focus doesn't use parameters like style or aspect ratio. Those are all settings inside of the menu system. And along with the regular styles, don't be afraid to type in the style of a certain artist, because a lot of times you can get certain types of images, but it may not be exactly what you want. So you can combine the focus styles along with putting in the name of an artist, now, also a lot of tools, including Focus, have negative prompts. I'm not gonna dive a lot into negative prompts. I do have a separate video that covers those. The idea behind a negative prompt is things that you don't want. But in most cases, you're gonna find it's actually much easier and better to just build a good regular prompt than have to fight with a negative prompt. Negative prompt is usually my last resort. If I'm having issues, I go in, I'll add things in the negative prompt. Don't be afraid to use it but also don't overload it and don't expect the miracles out of it. Because if you type tree, a forest into your prompt and you type trees in the negative prompt, you're still gonna get trees. So let's talk about prompt weight. Prompt weight just means how much each section, word, or part of your prompt is a higher priority. Naturally, putting things at the beginning of the prompt is gonna give it more weight than things weigh at the end of the prompt, especially if you have a really long prompt. Shorter prompts, I don't really find much of a difference, but when you get to a really long one, then you can find more impact. The other way to add prompt weights as well, you can add them to single keywords, or you can do whole phrases. And there's multiple ways, depending on which program you're using. I find a lot of different ones online. One of them just put parentheses around it. If you put multiple parentheses, it adds more weight. That's one way of doing it with many of these. I know Focus will read that. The other way is you can just click on a word and you could type this out as well. I find the shortcuts easier. If you hold down the control key and then use up and down arrow, you could change the weights. That's a lower weight and then you can go up. Now, 1.1 is basically, you know, 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50. I find if you go over 1.5, you start getting weird results. So I tend to not go any further than that in most cases. These can also be used in your negative prompts and sometimes they're actually even more useful in your negative prompt, uh, especially when you're having a hard time getting rid of something. Take advantage of that. It doesn't always work. Negative prompts are kind of tricky. If we want to adjust that, we'll just click back in there. We use the same key shortcuts and we can get rid of it. If you want to do a whole phrase, we can select the phrase same idea. I have gone ahead and I have a wildcard set up 
that is will increment through the weights so we can see the difference here. Um, now I've also set in my settings in the debug mode, we can um, turn on disable seed increment and read wildcards in order. This will allow us to create the same image over again with the same prompt, but we're gonna slowly increase the weight on that red hair. It's gonna start off as just the standard and then it's gonna work their way up to 1.5. I'm gonna generate some images so we can see the difference on how that weight will impact this. And this is really useful when you're trying to fine tune things, you could do something similar as well. So I have my seed set to a set seed. So let's go ahead and we'll see um, the results. And the one on the left is the standard weight for red hair and the one all the way on the right is the 1.5. It's not a major difference in some things you're gonna notice a bigger difference than other things. Um, but it definitely is a little bit redder and it does impact, you'll see as we get further along, it changed the position and you know the other ones didn't change the, the picture to the image too much whereas those other ones did. So they do have an impact on that, so do keep that in mind, but that is one way that you can increase or lower weight to adjust and fine tune things if you really want to. When the AI isn't giving you something you want in the image, even though you have the word in there, you can add more weight to it to force it to more likely give you that image. Now, this one's more specific to focus and uh, multi-line prompts and blending. Now, I do have a in-depth video on this, but I will cover the basics of it so you know it's another option. So focus uses something called multi-line prompts. As you can see here, these two are on separate lines. I've hit enter after the first one. What that does is when focus now, when I hit this generate button, it will start alternating and generating each one. It'll go back and forth and fight its way. As you can see, I've applied weights in here because I do find you really need to adjust those sometimes to get things to blend the way you want. There's a lot of different ways that you can blend people, blend animals, you can blend styles, you can blend all sorts of things. Certain things are easier to blend than others. Getting animals to blend can be difficult, especially if they're drastically different. I'm giving this one a turtle and a seagull a shot. Getting good results out of these can be a little bit challenging. It takes a lot of trial and error and a lot of adjusting the weights, as I show in my other video, if you wanna check that out. So that's basically how multi-line prompts work. It's just two lines, you can do more lines. It goes through each ones and alternates between them. And then we have our turtle seagull combination. Now let's talk about the association effect. What that comes down to is you mention one thing and other things come up in your image generations. What that comes down to is how things are trained, biases and everything else. So for example, here we have, I've asked for a nurse talking to a patient, we end up with four images of nurses talking to patients. But obviously, they're all women, because that's traditionally brought along with the word nurse. Same idea, doctor talking to a patient, more likely it's going to be a male. That's brought along with the word doctor. These are things that you have to be aware of when you're, gener when you're generating them, when you start getting things you're not expecting. This can also happen with celebrities. We put in Taylor Swift in a dress. Well, we're more likely going to get certain poses because it's going to relate that, but it's also going to get certain types of dresses. Whereas if we just put a woman in a dress, we get completely different dresses. And that comes down to the association effect of Taylor Swift with those styles and certain poses. This also, you'll find it evident as well when you ask for something, you'll find the biases with eye color. So in this one, we did a young female with blue eyes sitting at a restaurant wearing a dress. Along with blue eyes, we get mostly the blonde hair. You get certain looks that come along with that. When we go with brown eyes, we get a different look because those are brought along with those same traits. So whenever you're generating and coming up with prompts, always be aware of any words or terms that you're using and what might've come along. And that's where a thesaurus and other stuff can be useful as well, because it can have you look for other terms if you're running into that problem. And just because you have one result from one model, doesn't mean you're gonna get the same thing, same biases and everything else with other models. So do keep that in mind as well. Now, one thing I do want to mention when I see what I see a lot of people do when they're new to generative AI is put things in your prompt that you don't want. So for this here, an old car sitting on cement block without tires, rusted. Well, by putting in without tires, you're probably going to get more likely to get tires because it doesn't understand, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't understand 
language per se. It understands words. So it sees tires. So you're more likely to see get that. Those are the sorts of things you want to always try to put in your negative prompt if you're having problems. And also that's where things like a thesaurus and just come up with other ways of saying that you want the vehicle without tires, which leads me to a challenge. And that is to come up with a good prompt that will have a car sitting on either blocks or a lift without tires on the vehicle uh, and leave that in the comments. I've tried a few different ideas, but I'd like to see some creative ways of doing it, preferably without using a negative prompt. And thanks for watching the video. And if you found it helpful, please do consider hitting that like button. Don't forget to check out my other videos. I do have a lot of tips on using focus and stable diffusion. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.